place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. Hi guys, I'm back. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I don't think I've actually introduced myself before in my other videos. But anyways, my name is Dee. So today, I'm actually planning on, oh, you notice my glasses, they get dark when I'm in the sun. They're those transition type. <laughs> They're like sunglasses, double, double duty. My dog, Dahlia, she's so energetic. Gosh, she needs to take a chill pill. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm back in my kitchen. And today I have to make my sauerkraut and my daigu. So I'm thinking I might have to split those two in half. What I'll do is I will show you my sauerkraut today. I will have a second video on the daigu because the videos might run pretty long, possibly. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so I ran out of my sauerkraut and I thought I'd show you the process of how I make that. I usually have sauerkraut with everything that I eat, almost everything, not sweets, of course, but you know, as a side dish, I'll have the sauerkraut because it helps my gut. I started eating sauerkraut about a year ago and my doctor, he makes it himself and he's the one who said to eat this, it's good for your stomach. And I've been making it ever since and I'm loving it. It's so much better. You know what the ingredients are, you know what goes into it. So without further ado, oh, and I got my Earl Grey iced tea from Infusion. Obviously the ice is kind of melted already. That's okay. What I do is I'll transfer this to my cup. So where's my cup? I'll transfer that and then add ice to it. I put it in this cup. This is a 34 ounce cup. It's insulated. And this size happens to be a 32 ounce. So perfect. Enough room for my ice to go in there. All right guys, so let me get my stuff together. I'm going to fix my tea and then I'm going to show you what is all involved with the sauerkraut. What are the ingredients and how I prepare it. So I picked up this from Ross. It has a cover and this is what's cool about this is it's like a Tupperware type um, cover. You can fill the water in here without spilling. I like my tea really cold. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. I always like to make sure I have a supply of ice and I never run out, because that would be annoying. I'm gonna make me sausage and eggs later for breakfast. Okay, so for, there you go, for the sauerkraut, hold on. Let me try to get this to focus, there we go. So I use pink Himalayan sea salt. I have this bowl, a large bowl. I'm using this because it fits in my refrigerator, it slides in. Then let me take you over here. I have two heads of cabbage. This is organic. I was lucky to find this. And, and I went ahead and rinsed it ahead of time. Let me go ahead and get the chopping board out my knife and I'm going to go ahead and start slicing this. I try to get it as thin as possible, but I'll just show you what I end up with. So what I do is I cut this in half because you have to take the core out. So it kind of looks like a little triangle. Like follow the shape of the core when I'm cutting it out. And then I end up with that. 
same thing here. Okay, that's what we end up with. And I like to lay it on this on its side like this so it has stability. I do have a mandolin, but sometimes I just gravitate to this instead of setting everything up, I'll just use a knife. So this is what my sizes look like. Okay, so what I do in between each head that I chopped up, I add salt to it. And I usually add a tablespoon of the salt. I spread it around. Okay, let me get the salt. So here's one teaspoon and then let me get a tablespoon. So I take about and you don't want to add too much salt, but you want to add enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage that salt in here, mix it up. See, I can already feel it starting to sweat. It's not as dry anymore. It starts working right away. All right, so I'm going to take the rest of this salt and I'm going to add it in here. Okay, massage that in, and then we'll work on the other head of cabbage. All right, let's see how that looks. You can kind of see it glistening. I don't know if you can see that. All right, let's work on the second head. Oh, and I forgot. I'm going to save a couple of pieces. You want to use these to push the cabbage down underneath the liquid and this is basically a cover to do that and then I also use weights and I'll show you that as well. Let me go ahead and finish this and then I will come back. Okay so this is what I ended up with. Two heads of cabbage. I'm going to go ahead and add the second tablespoon to the second head of cabbage. Massaging the salt Get it incorporated. Oh yes, it's starting to sweat. You can tell it's starting to get heavy. Let me go ahead and let this sit here for about five minutes and then I will get back to it. Okay guys, so I got everything set up on this side of the counter and as you can see, this is the two heads of cabbage. I added a tablespoon of salt each it's pretty much sweating now. You can kind of see how heavier it looks. I don't know if I'll have enough room in this jar. And if I don't, it's fine, it's okay. I have a second jar I can add to. And like I said, the more the merrier. I'm gonna to need to add some extra salted water. And I'll show you how to do that. All right. And you wanna make sure that your jars are clean start with clean jars, clean hands, as always. So you can kind of see here, let me show this to you. It's already starting. I might be moving a little too fast. I probably can actually let this sit longer, but don't feel like it. I'm gonna just do what I normally do. This is pink Himalayan salt. And you can see that the cabbage has started to sweat. Let me go ahead and start filling this up. Oh, sorry, let's show you what's going on here. So basically, I, as I fill it, I push it down. I want to try to get it as compacted as you can. It prevents it also from floating when you add the liquid. We get it in one jar, I think. I don't know, let's see. I think we got it in one jar. All right, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Every little bit of goodness into this jar. We got it in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water. 
And I'm thinking, maybe I'll do two cups. Two cups of water. And this is filtered water. And we'll add a teaspoon. Yeah. I put about a teaspoon and a half of salt in here. So we'll just stir that up and get it to dissolve. I love sauerkraut. So good with, with meat and even some vegetables. Sometimes mixing it in with veggies tastes really good. Try it out. Let's not knock it till we try it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sit break. Okay, so this is pretty much dissolved and I'm gonna go ahead and add it in. There's still a little salt in there, but that's fine. Okay, so we're just gonna fill this up and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the top of this is covered with this liquid. And look, I think I'm gonna have to end up making, am I gonna have to do another one? Okay, with this one, I'm just gonna add water because there's enough salt in there. There's enough salt that I put in there, so I'm just gonna add water. Okay, now it's still kind of popping up above the liquid, but once I put this in, it'll push it down. But before I do that, I'm going to push it down on the sides. Okay, can you see that pretty well? Okay, so now I'm gonna wash my hands real quick before I stick this cabbage piece on top. That extra water that I added without the salt, it was about three fourths cup. Let's go ahead and add these in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these like so. And I'm gonna push it down also underneath the liquid. And this is to hold the sauerkraut down. Let's see. Maybe I did. No, let's do it this way. Okay, so you see how that is? I pushed it down pretty good. Now you still need a weight. I'm going to take a weight and push that down. I bought these weights on Amazon. I'll link it in the description as well. But this is what the weights look like. And these are pretty much clean, but I'm going to go ahead and rinse it. What I'd like to do is I place this in a storage bag, get like a quart size. And I put this in here so that way I can easily pull it out. It doesn't fall somewhere down in there. So what I do is I take the bag and I wrap it around the top and try to get all that air out. I'll try cutting this because it's a little bit too tight to wrap around the mouth of the jar. There we go. Okay, so like so. And there you go. There's the weight right there. Keeps it from falling in there and you're losing it. I've done that before through trial and error. So that's that. Everything is submerged under the liquid. And then I just close the top. And every day, once a day in the morning, you should open this up. You're gonna, what you're gonna do is open it up and usually air can escape once you take this off, even if you don't remove this, but I just kind of go like this, push it down, and then I'll fix it back. But you wanna let the air escape, because if you don't, it's gonna start coming up and over the mouth of the jar and it will start seeping out. Another good tip is to keep this on a plate or something of the sort. You'll see there's liquid on the bottom of the plate. So that's how I do that right there. And that's it. When I make sauerkraut, I leave it sitting, I would say seven days, but I go by the color. Once it starts turning like a darker type yellow, that it's no longer white and greenish. And then of course, the tanginess of it, because it could turn yellow or start turning yellow and it doesn't have that tangy taste if you are if you know what sauerkraut tastes like, if you're familiar with that. Um, so that would be my determining factor when it's done. Mm -hmm. Give it a couple days. And you have delicious, yummy sauerkraut. Maybe you try out some of the sauerkraut for yourself. Please check out my next video. That will be the recipe for Daigo. And that is also yummy. You gotta check that one out. All right, so I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.